Okay, we're going to take some time right now to just, let me move back. To, you, you can keep on. I, I like that. I can just sit, we can just sit up here and chill with that all night, right, ladies? All right. But we're going to ask Brian. Um, he's been so kind to take a couple of questions from us. So I'm going to ask some questions, and then I'm going to give a couple of you ladies a chance to ask a question. Hence, a couple. Well, maybe more than a couple. Now, Brian, tell us about the new album, Just Me, right? And of course, we're playing the single on V101.5 Fall 5.0. Don't we love that, ladies? Uh, you know, it started off as being just um, the live section of the CD. There's two CDs. Um, I'm going to fix that little feedback action. There. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the Careless Whisperer's on there. Um, <laughs> but that was part of, you know, as I, as I, when Thanksgiving comes, you'll get the video portion of the live. It was actually a concert that I did in L.A. back in March. And um, it's been the show that I've been doing all over the country where I went back to the way I wrote the songs, which is kind of the way you heard it tonight. Either I'm just playing guitar or just playing piano. Um, of course, as I produce records, I put all the rest of the instrumentation on it. But I don't, you know, most people write songs from tracks. I actually write the song first and then make the tracks after. So the, you hear, you're hearing the raw version of the songs, which is kind of the way I intended them in the first place. Um, but there's 30 live songs on the CD, and then there's 10 brand new songs. So you get 40 songs for the price of a regular CD. And we're going to buy the CD, right? <laughs> we're not going to get it from Pookie Nim and all that good stuff. We're going to support <laughs> Brian and go out and buy the CD, right? OK. Well, Brian, on the CD, I noticed that you're working with your son, Brian McKnight Jr. Are you doing music with him now? Well, both my sons, Nico as well. Um, they are 21 and 18 now. The way, this is how it works in our house. The studio is the last room at the end of the hall upstairs. And uh, when I'm working on something, I just put it up on the hard drive. And you know they sleep all day and work all night. So by the time they get up, they'll see something up there. And the, their job was to make dad sound as current as possible. <laughs> So, okay. Because they li they're the ones listening to the radio. They're the ones that are watching the videos. They're on YouTube all day. They barely watch television because they're always you know, trying to figure out what the next sound is going to be. Um, BJ actually engineered the last two records um, upstairs in the house center. And it's pretty great, you know, because my mom can't say, well, you know, the gift stopped with you. You know, my sons have passed it down to them. Keeping the tradition so going. I'm good. I'm good. Need well, you know, <coughs> when, when we get into the mood, we like to listen to you. <laughs> Who do you listen to when you want to get into the mood? Do you listen to yourself or? Uh... I actually can't listen to music. I <laughs> really? Cannot, no, no, because I'm a musician. And okay. what you want is my mind and my heart to be on you and not listening to, ooh, that was a cool chord change. Or wow. that was this, you know, I need to. I mean, I light the candles. And uh, I, you know, what's funny, though, is that I can have Sports Center on the television. <laughs> but I cannot listen to music. Wow. Because, you know, because I, I don't have to be looking at the TV. But if I'm listening, maybe everybody missed all that, but that's all right. Wow. <laughs> wow. Ladies, y'all know I'm trying to play it off up here right now. <laughs> Professional KJ. Uh, okay, I'm moving right along. Now, there, there's an item that I can't live without. I cannot live without my iPhone. What is something that you just cannot live without? You have to have it with you, you know. Golf clubs. Oh, a golfer, huh? Golf Are you pretty good? I'm pretty good. And I'm constantly tweaking and messing with my game. I finally, uh, if you watch the pros, and I don't want to bore you with golf talk, but my, the guy that I just started working with, he, he looked at my clubs and he said I was, I was playing with toys. Wow. Because that's what you buy at the store. And you figure, but he actually built me some clubs I just got yesterday. Custom. That, um, yeah, completely. Wow. And uh, you can tell the first time you hit those that that's what the pros hit, and that's why it looks so easy on TV. Why? Because it actually is when they do it, because the clubs do all the work, but that's just a, it's a golf thing. I know you don't. So, ladies, we got to go get some golf clubs, some right? Golf clubs. <laughs> well, you know what? All I ever hear is that, you know what? I can't find a good man. Where are the good men? Now, they on the golf course every day. Ladies, we're doing a golf <laughs> course promotion, okay? You all make sure you listen to V101.5, because I think we all need to find one. You know, some people might have one, but some of us need to find one, and we'll be on the golf course. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, we know that you're, you're into music. You do music. If you didn't do music, what other profession do you think you would be in right now? Well, originally, I wanted to be a gynecologist. Wow. 
Well, let me tell you, let me tell you why. Though. Ladies, we also need to get our pap smears. No, no. <laughs> no, but see, you got to hear me out, though. You got to hear me out. Dr. Brian listen, McKnight. Listen, listen. <laughs> But you gotta hear my you gotta hear my rationale. You got, I was like, okay, when you're when you're 16 or 17 years old, you want want a profession that's gonna make you a lot of money. Doctors right. make a lot of right. money. Right. Steady money. It's 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 it's, it's uh, recession proof. Number two, you want to work with the thing you love the most. And then number three, <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> ladies, I'm trying to be professional up but here, here, but he's but, making it harder but see, and harder. When I when I realized that you couldn't just hand pick your clientele, yes, then I decided. <laughs> you never know what you might get, right? So you were like, let me stick and, to the music. You know, I didn't want to catch a case. It's like you're here for your past smear, but you need to, I need to put you under. You know, that would not be cool. Oh, doctor, I feel so different when I woke up. <laughs> There's something wrong with, what happened? Did something <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that, but we got that good have, information, right? You, know, you can't right? ask right. me just anything. You gotta, I like, you know, but I like you gotta, this. You see, you know, if you don't stick honest. to music, then I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> anything else that you want to tell us about? Because I mean, this know. is entertaining for me. I'm going golfing. I'm going to make sure I have my checkups. <laughs> okay, you know, when we see you, you know, we see you on stage, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Mr. Brian McKnight. Right. You know, you're the superstar that you are. What is a typical Brian McKnight day like? I mean, something that we might it's, not know that you do. It's really boring. Is it? It's just what I just said. Um, the days that I'm not working, um, I'm up at 7, boxing in the gym for like two hours. And then, Boxing um, ladies? And then, um, you know, I goof around at home for a little while. Then I'm either at the country club or me and my friends have the BGA, the Black Golfers Association, where we get together one day a week and play $100 a hole. Now, now it gets pretty serious with these cats, especially when you're taking their money. Um, <coughs> And that's really about it. I don't really do much more than that. I mean, I used to hang out. I used to party. I used to get and do all those things. But, you know, I'm, I'm older now, and I, I like the very simple, simple things. And um, I, there's, because I don't spend a lot of time at home, I have everything I need at my house. Yeah. So I like to be there um, when I can be. That's Is there I'm anything that you're, you know, you've done a lot of different things. Is there anything that you would like to pursue that you haven't already? Mm. Acting or anything? I mean, I've done some acting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not going to be that guy who's all over town, you know, reading for every part in the world. It would be great to write and produce and direct and score on my own film of some sort. Um, but I have my hand in a couple of other pies that have nothing to do with music, nothing to do with other things that I don't, so I don't have to necessarily work because I have to later on. And I think that's the key in any profession. You want to make sure that, you know, you have a great quality of life beyond all the other things. And I think sometimes as, as black folks, we didn't have people, I, I mean, I have white friends who say things to me like, oh yeah, my grandparents passed and left all my cousins, you know, half a million dollars a piece. Okay. how they do that? <laughs> you know, we, so you, it, it's important that we, um, you know, you teach your kids about, you know, thinking about tomorrow, thinking about, you know, because I know I've, I've fallen victim to, it, victim to it as well. I've tricked off a lot of money on stupid things. I wish I had that pleasure. You but know. No. Well, and you know how it is. You think, oh, I got it now, and I'm going to have it forever. It's going to continue to happen. And then, you know, George W. Bush gets in office. And <laughs> okay. And we'll move on. Divorce. And anyway, how are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying this. I could sit up here all night, but you know, we, this is going to be my final question. Okay. I guess. What is something that we don't know about you that we would be shocked to know, besides the doctor and the golf thing, and you, you know, know something that we would be like, wow. The I would thing never that imagined. doing this acoustic tour has done is shown people that, you know, when you listen to my music, you think that I'm this sort of serious guy that's always had his heart broken and thinking about love, and that could be that couldn't be farther from the truth. I am silly all the time. Um, Except at the house with my sons and their friends, they're all completely terrified of me because I'm always walking around with a mean face on because I don't want them to touch my stuff. <laughs> you know, I, I just really don't. 
And you know, these kids these days, they have no respect. They have none. It's like, how do you go to a man's house and not even speak to him? You come in like, go right upstairs. And I'm like, man, I will. You know, but I, I don't need to go off on a tangent. I don't even know what the question was. I think that, that's, more, but that's okay. We don't <laughs> care. We just like seeing you talk. <laughs> I don't remember. What was the question? We're fine. You, 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 you handled it. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I love to have a good time um, within certain parameters, of course. When people start, I have this uncanny knack to be out of this, out of the place before somebody gets crazy and somebody gets shot or somebody gets beat up. You don't like to close the club up. Well, you know, you, you hear the next day, the, the, the day that Biggie died, that night, I had just seen him and I decided not to go. Right. Um, same thing with Pac and uh, some other friends, you know, just crazy stuff happens. And I've always been very blessed to either be there five minutes earlier or get out of there five minutes later. And um, you, know, you just never know. You cannot take life for granted because you just may not have it. So I live for today, and um, which kind of goes against my whole thinking about tomorrow thing, but that was financially. <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify, that boy was crazy. You <laughs> said. Okay, this this is really the final <laughs> one. I'm, this is the final one. It's kind of it's kind of two part, and then I'm gonna let okay. some ladies out Great. there. You're famous, sort of. Come on now, <laughs> you're I, Brian uh, McKnight. Okay, I, I'm not trying to play some modest yeah. card, but I know people who are really famous, and uh, people know me. Yeah, you're, we and think I, you're famous, don't we, ladies? Yeah. Well, and go, and with, go with, hang with, out with like Michael Jordan. You'll see you're not very famous. <laughs> You know, stand around with Jamie Foxx, you'd be like, what? <laughs> Okay. Then I'm just the tall, or could be the bodyguard. <laughs> w with all the fame that you have, what is the thing that you like most about being famous and the thing you like least about being famous? Well, I would like to think that uh, the thing I love the most is why. I hope that I'm famous because people like the songs that I've written. Um, that would be a good thing. Mission accomplished, right? The thing that I hate the most is that you, you can't turn it off. So if, and here's the thing about me. You may see me like at an airport at 5.30 in the morning, and it's not that I'm not being nice to you, or not, my mind is just someplace else. I probably didn't even see you, but you got the guy standing there going, yo, or the young lady going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I don't assume that that's for me because I really don't, I'm, I'm that guy about an hour a day or two hours if I have a show that day. The rest of the time I'm just Brian, so I don't, I don't walk into a room saying, here I am, Mr. Famous Guy, acknowledge me. I don't. I just walk into a room and see what's going on. I get the feel, whatever, but people sometimes expect you to, because I've seen other people who are celebrities who can come in and fake the whole Hollywood thing. I can't do that. Unfortunately, it makes people think that I think that I'm the shit, and I really don't think that. I just have my mind someplace else, and I'm just, you know. But you know, it's it's that perception. But at the end of the day, I hope hopefully people will just take me, and at the end of the, when I'm when I'm dead and gone, my epitaph will read, Brian McKnight, that guy wrote cool songs. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be the end of it, and I, I would be happy with that. All right, well, I'm, we're we're going to take it out into the audience. Can I have the house lights, please, so I don't break my neck. Okay, we're gonna take a couple of questions. Anyone? Right here. Stand up, please. What is your name? Gotta get that phone. What's your name? Joyce. And what's your question, Joyce? Hi, Brian. First of all, um, I got very emotional on one of your songs, so thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. Um, but I'd like to know, is there anyone that you haven't worked with that you would like to? Mm, not really. Not really? <laughs> not one person? Um. That's, you know, you have to think about the dead or the, what dead, that, dead or that question is. Oh, dead or alive. Well, if Marvin was here, that would be awesome. Okay, could, there you go. Oh, that you would know, be and I'm not saying I'm not dissing people who are making right. records now. I just, you know, I just have kind of always loved doing my thing. Okay. You know, and um, it really was never really about, ooh, can I get with you and do this and that and the other? Maybe, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to really give you my whole opinion <laughs> on that, but. You know, I just like being over here in my own little space. I always wanted people, when you heard me, that you knew that was me. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if that's what happens like so much it. now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, another one right here. What's your name? Michelle. 
Um, on each one of your albums, you have at least one gospel song. So I was wondering, have you ever thought about making just a whole gospel album? Okay, here's the deal on the gospel album. I cannot be, you know, I grew up playing in every kind of church there was. And I saw the hypocritical nature of what it meant to be this in front of everyone. And then when the curtain went down, you were somebody else over there. So I decided, stop, stop. That's my guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, hold on, let me get him. Uh, get okay, so I decided that I would have to do a whole lot of change in my life to, to make a record, because to me, that would be like me trying to preach to someone about how they need to be when. I, I'm not right like that. And then as I've gotten older, and I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, I'm still trying to figure out what I believe and what is this. And I know, and I said, on my last album, I had that song called Not Alone, which was really how I feel about it. You know, I don't know all the stuff I knew or thought I knew growing up about God and church and things. I just know I'm not alone. So at a certain point, there's just things I don't really understand. And until they let me into the Vatican to see all the books, I need, I need to see. <laughs> everything. All right. Amen, brother. Another question. I'm going to go <coughs> way back here. Excuse me. And what's your name? My name is Petrina Jordan. Um, my question for you is, being the celebrity that you are, um, do you find yourself checking out the tabloids and saying, oh, let me see what they're saying about me today? No, because they don't talk about me. That's other, a good one. Other than a couple of times this year where I, I did some stupid stuff like once in 20 years. You know, I'm really not. That's, that shows you how famous you are, though. When you're really, really famous, you're in the tabloids. When you're not, you're not. And I'm okay with that. Okay. What's well, your name, sir? My name Baby Scott. Hey, look. When you got people that's trying to get into the industry that have a pure talent of songwriting and playing musicians, what would you encourage them to say and do? You know, that's the hardest question that there is right now because I have two that live in my house with me. Um, I'm not sure if record labels are looking for talent. Talent takes money to, 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 to get that out there. Whereas when you don't necessarily have talent, but you have a look or you have a cool name you made up for yourself or a cool costume, so it's a whole lot easier to just put that right out. Um, I, really, I really wish I had the answer to that question um, because there's not a whole lot of that in the mainstream. So what you have to ask yourself is what do you want? Do you want to be famous? Because that's easy to get. If you want a career, it's going to take a lot of hard work and perseverance because there's going to be a lot of doors that get slammed in your face. I have a framed um, letter in my house from this guy who worked at Atlantic at the time when I was trying to get my first deal. He, he says on there that, y you know, we're going to pass on you because we feel you'd be a really great background singer but never really a great lead sort of. Wow. So. And now look. 20 million records later. Here We're we going to go. take two more questions. <coughs> two more questions. Excuse me. And your name? Kendra. Hi, Brian. Hi. I just wanted to know what is your guiding principle and, and if that's changed through the years. The only thing that we had a plaque in, in my house, my mother's kitchen, that when I was really little, I didn't understand it. It said that success comes in cans. And I was like, how in the hell <laughs> is success going to come in a can? But that's before I read the rest of it that said failure comes in cans. So. We learned something else. Yeah. yeah, so that's it. I even told my children, and my son has a tattoo on his arm that says never say can't. Because I, every time they said that, I was like, don't say that. You can find a way. There is no can't. Can't doesn't exist. One more question. Oh. Okay, you're over here. I feel like Oprah. <laughs> oh, I got you. Yes, you have to stand up. It's Brian McKnight. What's your name? Hannah. Um, I wasn't sure if you're going to sing again, but I want you to sing. Or I want to know if you can sing, never felt this way. Please. Please. Okay, this is what I'll do. If there's, if there's a song that you haven't heard yet, then there's one. Is there another one maybe you want to hear? One last cry. 
Crazy love. Okay. All right. <laughs> Brian, before you do that. Before I do that. One more thing I'd like to say. Okay. You know, you know the term, I brought you into this world and I can take you out? Mm. Well, my mother's here. Okay. <laughs> Mom, did you have a question? Can you stand up, please? Can oh, you say hi to my mother. mother? You walk right past her like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I didn't even see her. She was like, I got one. I go. She's like, yeah, I'm going to be right over I didn't see. And Wiz said, and uh, I looked at her your like, mother has a question. Your name, please, ma'am? Donna. <laughs> hi, Brian. Hi. Once upon a time, I had a crazy love, and you came out with that song, and I walked around all day. Love, love, love. <laughs> crazy love. Thank you. All right. I wish I could take credit for that one. Okay, I, Mom. I didn't write that one, but I did. Uh, the song is a fantastic song. Fantastic song. Okay, let me see. Uh, 